Step into optimal anesthesia, where every episode enriches your journey through the world of anesthesia. Ever wonder why anesthesia isn't one size fits all for older adults? Today, we explore how aging influences anesthesia, revealing crucial physiological changes that impact drug effects. From gaining fat to losing muscle and experiencing less total body water, these shifts dramatically alter how anesthetics work. So, let's dive into this fascinating topic. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, we will examine the changes in our body composition as we age. This understanding can help us appreciate the physiological transformations we experience and guide health decisions. Let's begin with fat mass. As we age, total body fat increases, particularly visceral fat around organs in the abdominal region. Research shows that after age 30, body fat tends to increase steadily. Older adults typically have nearly one-third more fat than younger individuals, impacting metabolic health. It's a shift from subcutaneous to visceral fat, which carries greater health implications. Next, lean body mass, including muscle, bones, and organs, declines with age, a change known as sarcopenia. This loss lowers our metabolic rate and physiological function, which significantly impacts how our body metabolizes drugs. With less muscle mass, there's a significant impact on drug metabolism, posing unique challenges, especially in medical treatments for older adults. Lastly, there's a change in total body water. Aging reduces both intracellular and extracellular fluids, affecting the distribution of hydrophilic drugs. This change is critical in understanding how medications react within our bodies as we age. The volume of distribution is basically how a drug spreads throughout the body. For anesthesia drugs, this is heavily influenced by two factors, water and fat content. As we age, lean body mass and total body water decrease. What does this mean for hydrophilic drugs, those that dissolve in water? A smaller volume of distribution. This leads to higher plasma concentrations of drugs like succinylcholine, a common muscle relaxant. Higher concentrations can increase the risk of side effects, like prolonged apnea or cardiovascular instability. That's why for hydrophilic drugs, lower doses are often needed in older adults to avoid toxicity. A little adjustment can go a long way in ensuring patient safety. Now let's talk about lipophilic drugs, those that dissolve in fat. Unlike water, fat content actually increases as we age, especially visceral fat. This increases the volume of distribution for lipophilic drugs, causing them to stay in the body longer. One common example is propofol, a fast-acting intravenous anesthetic. In older adults, the increased fat mass means propofol's effects last longer, and its side effects, like hypotension, can hit harder. That's why we reduce induction doses by 40 to 50 percent and administer it more slowly to keep things under control. So, to sum it up, Hydrophilic drugs, like succinylcholine, need smaller doses because of reduced water content. Lipophilic drugs, like propofol, require careful dosing due to increased fat stores. Have you wondered how your body eliminates medications? Your liver and kidneys are the process MVPs. We're studying liver and renal clearance tests for drug metabolism today. Do not worry, we'll make it simple and fun. Let's start with the liver, the body's detox factory. It breaks down most drugs into forms your body can use or discard. We run certain tests to see how well the liver is doing. Rising alt and AST may indicate liver stress or injury. Think of it as your car's engine light and early warning. The liver produces albumin, which transports several medications. Low albumin may indicate that the liver isn't producing enough, which could impact drug distribution. Have you heard of jaundice? Related to bilirubin. If levels are excessive, the liver may not be cleaning things out. 
Prothrombin time measures blood clotting speed. A long one indicates the liver isn't generating enough clotting factors, which could indicate drug metabolism issues. Hepatic metabolic capacity is directly measured by caffeine or antipyrin clearance, revealing liver medication clearance potential. Let's pamper the kidneys. After the liver metabolizes medicines, the kidneys filter and eliminate them. How we evaluate their efficiencies serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen are kidney health indicators. If levels are excessive, the kidneys may be having trouble clearing waste, including drug metabolites. Like a speedometer, creatinine clearance measures kidney blood filtration. Quicker clearance implies healthier kidneys. Glomerular filtration rate measures filter water flow. Higher is better for medication clearance. This is cool, the liver and kidneys often operate together. The liver metabolizes some medications before the kidneys discharge them. Understanding both organs is essential for safe and effective treatment. As our population ages, more elderly patients are undergoing surgery. Did you know that older adults are much more sensitive to anesthetics? This makes understanding the pharmacodynamic changes brought by aging not just important but essential for ensuring patient safety and effective management. Let's break this down. Aging brings profound changes to the body that influence how drugs work. Let's start with two key terms, receptor function and sensitivity. In older adults, receptor density and function decline. Think of neurotransmitters like GABA, nicotinic, and acetylcholine as players in a game. With age, these players slow down or leave the field altogether. This is why elderly patients need less of an anesthetic to feel its effects. In fact, what's a regular dose for a younger person can hit an older adult like a sledgehammer. The takeaway? Standard doses can lead to exaggerated responses. So, DOS adjustments are non-negotiable. Next, let's talk about three commonly used agents and how the elderly respond to them. First up, inhaled anesthetics. Did you know the MAC or minimum alveolar concentration drops by about 6% every decade? This means older patients need less of the drug to achieve the same level of anesthesia. It's all due to changes in neuronal ion channels and synaptic plasticity. Then, there's opioid sensitivity. Drugs like sufentanil and alfentanil hit harder in the elderly. While these can provide excellent pain relief, the risks, like respiratory depression and prolonged sedation, mean we need to titrate doses carefully. Finally, let's talk about propofol. This popular induction agent requires reduced doses in older adults. Why? To prevent hemodynamic instability, essentially, avoiding a sudden drop in blood pressure. Aging also impairs homeostasis, the body's ability to maintain stability under stress. And anesthesia is a big stressor. Reduced neuroplasticity and neurotransmitter levels make older adults more prone to postoperative delirium and cognitive dysfunction. And let's not forget the heart and lungs. With reduced cardiac and pulmonary reserve, maintaining stability during surgery becomes a juggling act. So, what's the solution? Tailoring anesthesia care to the elderly. Here are some tips. Use lower doses of anesthetic agents. Monitor vital signs closely, especially hemodynamics and respiration. Adopt a start low, go slow approach when titrating drugs. The process of aging alters the body, yet through a strategic approach, it is possible to tailor anesthesia care to address these specific requirements. Follow along on OptimalAnesthesia.com and share with friends to discover transformative anesthesia solutions. Your time is precious, and we sincerely thank you for watching.